It is that time again where I give you an obscene number of book recommendations. So, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. You guys have been asking for another very specific or the most odd book request recommendations video to be released again. So here we are. I have, I don't even know how many. I got so many requests. I could definitely make batches and batches of these videos and just throw them at you but i have picked a whole ton of your requests so we're just going to get into it if you do not know how this works essentially you just give me your most specific request for a book that you want you can tell me what you want in it what kind of book you want what kind of vibes you want it can be as specific as you want it to be and i will just pick a book that i think matches that so not all of these books i love but that's fine because even if i don't love a book you could totally fall head over heels with it so let's just start with number one someone said I want to feel everything. Please, I don't want to die. Heaven and Hell by Jan Kalman Stephenson. As the title suggests, this book encompasses the best of life, the worst of life. It will take you from heaven to hell and then back up from hell to heaven again, you know? So this encompasses like every single feeling known to humankind. It's so crazy. It made me feel so much. And I really just feel like this book will make you feel every single thing possible. Grief happiness, hunger, the will to live, magic, the feeling of being in nature, friendship, uh, relationships, everything. Also, gorgeous writing. The streets are covered with seaweed as if the sea had sneezed on us. Fantastic. Number two, someone wants a book to cope with growing up. I gotta grab it. It's Anne of Green Gables. Uh, this is a book about someone growing up, but she also deals with so many things in her life, like losing people, relationships, learning about herself, learning about society. So often in this book, like you feel her not wanting to grow up and it's just so lovely to read. I think it'll take you back to childhood while also making you feel like it's okay not to be in, not to be there anymore and to just grow up. Speaking of very specific things, I also wanted to thank Wonder for sponsoring today's video. Wonder is an app that turns words any word, any sentence, any weird concept you can think of into digital art. So it's a free app that you install on your phone and then all you need to do is enter a prompt, pick a style, an art style that you want your art to be in, and then watch Wonder bring any single one of your ideas to life. Wonder Premium includes over 20 styles to create your art in. It's much faster. You can make unlimited pieces of art and there are no ads at all. One of my favorites that have been created so far is a vampire drinking coffee and the cozy Christmas cottage. I freaking love this one. I feel like with a lot of these as well, it's nearly impossible to tell that they aren't made by people, that it's created by AI, which is really cool. For example, if I wanted to create something really specific or not that specific, like a girl reading a book, I would just type in girl reading book and then I would pick the art style that I want and you can download it to your phone as well. You could definitely use Wonder if you need to bring an idea to life. If you're struggling to see how something is visualized, I think this could actually be a really great creative process, like a creative prompt process for someone who's writing creatively. I love writing stuff that I can actually see. So for example, if I'm writing about like a hotel full of weird aquatic fish, I can have an AI provide me with a visual aid in literally under 10 seconds. If you guys would like to try it, click here to download Wonder and get a free trial of the premium version so that you can put your creativity to the test. Someone requested brilliant society women who make everyone fall in love with them. Um, I'm gonna say First Love by Turgenev. I'm also gonna try really hard in this video not really to repeat any of the hundreds of books I've done in other videos like this, but it may not be possible because I totally do not remember. But First Love, um, this is about a woman who everyone falls in love with, including our narrator, who is telling us his story of his first time falling in love with this woman. Uh, everyone's obsessed with her. It's the kind of book where there are soirees and soirees, beautiful, sumptuous, delicate, where men uh, compose plays for her, you know? When you have people composing plays for you and poetry and then acting them out in front of you, simp level maxed out. This is about our narrator kind of vying for the affection of this brilliant society woman who has everyone um, at her mercy essentially because she's just so great. Someone wants a book to read in 30 minute intervals during my lunch break at work. So for this one, I thought it would be fun to recommend a short story collection because then you could probably finish a short story like one per each lunch break. However, I'm not the biggest fan of short story collections, but there are a few that I will always recommend. The Alienist being one of them. This is a gorgeous collection by Michelle J. Assis and it's just, it's so, it's so, so, so good. I feel like you can really lose yourself in these as well and like forget that you're working and then you can probably finish the whole collection after, you know, however many lunch breaks there are. The Alienist was definitely my favorite of the short stories, but so, 
so so good someone wanted fiction for people who work in restaurants i'm gonna recommend before the coffee gets cold by toshikazu kawaguchi this is about a cafe where drinking the coffee transports you back into the past um so you do follow some of the cafe workers it's definitely nice i feel like i'm always looking for books where people work in restaurants i used to work at a restaurant i used to work at an italian restaurant uh -huh. and it wasn't the best time of my life. There was something I tried to romanticize about it and I'm definitely always looking for literature set in restaurants. Another one that comes to mind is a manga, which is Restaurant to Another World, I believe, by Junpei Inuzuko. Inuzuko, if I'm remembering that correctly. I would try either of those. Something that reminds me of cold winters, fireplaces, and hot chocolate. We actually just had our first big snow of the season here. I'm so happy about it. And I absolutely have to recommend Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon for this one. Heather Dixon will work exquisite. I gave this five stars. I discovered this book last year and it is so glorious. It's a retelling of the Nutcracker, but it is so... I just can't explain to you all the Christmas feels that this book gives me. It is exactly the feeling of cold winters, fireplaces, and there's hot chocolate. There's like a candy emporium. It has every single holiday goodie you could want inside a book. 2000s rom-com and autumn vibes. The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling, I believe. I actually DNF this because I don't love 2000s rom-com vibes, but everyone who has read this and then like pitched it as something, they've described it as Hocus Pocus, I believe, or Halloween Town. I think, well, crap, maybe it was Halloween Town. One of those two, so the autumn vibes are definitely there because our main character is a witch, um, and it's like a second chance romance, I think, but because it has those like 2000s or late 90s vibes, I think this would be for you. Okay, someone wants a book that makes me root for the antagonist. This one's pretty ironic, but it's Paradise Lost by John Milton. Uh, the antagonist is Satan. It's Satan. Definitely not what Milton intended, I don't think, although there are some who argue, especially William Blake, that Milton did intend to uh, make Satan the hero of Paradise Lost and make you fall in love with Satan. But if you read this, um, that is what happens. You will root for the devil. You will feel so sorry for him. You will feel so much pity for him. You will be like, wow, this guy says some really beautiful things. He's given the most beautiful lines of poetry. Um, and language and it's just so good it's so cool it's a really cool experience i would really recommend just because like satan is so humanized in paradise lost he's just such a sad man which way i fly is hell myself am hell and in that lowest deep a lower deep still threatening to devour me opens wide to which the hell i suffer seems a heaven when he sees adam and eve or it, it is just eve the evil one abstracted stood from his own evil and for the time remained stupidly good of enmity disarmed of guile of hate of envy of revenge but the hot hell that always in him burns though in mid heaven soon ended his delight <laughs> someone wants a female lead but with horror vibes uh oh Ooh. the hacienda the hacienda by isabel kenyas this is a gothic a piece of literature with our female lead Beatriz who goes to the hacienda and she finds out that things are not good there and horrifying things start to happen. So this one. Okay, someone wants a book that feels like the Willow music video by Taylor Swift. For this one, I'm going to recommend Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik because the Willow music video gives me fairy tale vibes. It gives me like love that goes through a lot or like you're separated from the person there are people like going into mirrors finding secret passageways and spinning silver has all of that plus like in the music video there is you know a thread a golden thread leading our um lovers along and in spinning silver it is a retelling of rumpelstiltskin so those threads of silver are very much a theme in spinning silver and um it's a complete fairy tale world very snowy as well because there's a ton of snow in the music video so spinning silver one of my best friends said find me a romance book that won't make me cringe and die you know what that's a tall order these days because i'm having trouble not finding romance books that don't make me cringe and die one of the non-cringiest romance books i've ever read is get a life chloe brown i really like this one i think it's pretty realistic not too many cringy scenes the writing isn't super cringy and our characters just felt really down to earth and like solid and it didn't make me you know cringe my eyeballs out Someone asked for a book for someone who falls in love easily but is never taken seriously by the other person. 
I'm gonna recommend Far From the Madden Crowd by Thomas Hardy. This one kind of works both ways because this classic begins with a shepherd named Mr. Oak. He falls in love with our protagonist, who is this woman named Bathsheba, and he's like, yo, will you marry me? And she's like, no, you're just a shepherd. And like, I think she actually laughs in his face because she thinks it's a joke or something, if I'm remembering that right. Um, but the rest of the book follows their relationship. Um, but then Bathsheba herself isn't taken seriously in different ways by other suitors who now want to marry her. For example, there's this like lunatic man named Mr. Boldwood who is convinced that she's in love with him, but she's not. So it kind of, it kind of goes both ways with people not being taken seriously in love. Um, but this is the one, this is the first one that came to my mind. Someone wants a book about books, and this is a book that I have never mentioned on my channel anywhere. Um, I haven't read it in so, so many years, but it is Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore. That is definitely a book about books. Okay, someone wants a sci-fi book to start with the genre. This one is a little bit more hard hitting. There's a lot going on with it, but I read it pretty early on in my sci-fi journey and I really loved it. I gave it five stars and that is A Canticle for Leibowitz by Walter M. Miller Jr. Fantastic. So fantastic. This deals a lot ultimately with like nuclear possibilities and humanity's fate and its cyclical nature and really, really good. Then we get to the part where I just started typing them because we got too many. Okay, we have, we have a cat with us. Someone wants a book for when you quit your job and don't know if you'll ever find meaningful work because capitalism. Yes. Um, this one I'm gonna recommend Kiki's Delivery Service. This is really great in a number of ways. I think this gave me such a refresh on life, especially I think if you're working because we follow Kiki who isn't a full witch in that she only has I think one special gift that is given to her when she's supposed to have two. So she's already at a disadvantage in a system that places others well above her. Um, she finds it really tough going because she has to move out to a city and she's supposed to start working as some kind of witch job to help people. Ultimately, because she can't really get going, she starts to work for other people. Okay, you're being so lovey. Uh, she works like part-time at a bakery and stuff like that. There's also a super good analysis of it. Women running small businesses, like helping other women create like a small business centered community. It's a super good analysis in the book Miyazaki World, um, which is about all of his films. But Kiki eventually decides, you know what, I'm gonna start my own business. I'm just gonna try and getting it off the ground. But like, it's more her doing, it's more her doing what she loves and knowing that it's okay to fail, knowing that she has a good support system, it is of course idealized, it's a fantasy world. But it just gave me so much hope that like, yes, you can do what you love, even though like you will struggle so, so much. Um, but at the end, is it is it worth it? Is what I think Kiki's Delivery Service asks too. Um, so yeah, this was just, <laughs> I feel like this, was, this became a really deep topic. Kiki's Delivery Service does so much in that book, I think. Um, so highly recommend. Super quickly, female rage in a hysterical, non-cutesy way. The yellow wallpaper. Someone wants a book that feels like drinking cold water after chewing mint gum. Ice Fields by Thomas Wharton. Um, it feels like a freaking breath of fresh air. It's set in the winter, so it feels already so like fresh and breezy. There's a lot of mountain climbing, a lot of ice, a letter format book. These are actually called epistolary novels and I'm gonna recommend Dracula because I forget every single time that Dracula is set mostly in letter forms and diary entries, so Dracula. Someone wants to read a book that hugs me, brings me a cup of tea, and then lets me sleep on their lap. Snow and Rose by Emily Winfield Martin. This is very wholesome. Bro, what is this? Someone wants set in Victorian England. Someone wants set in Victorian England, very atmospheric. I'm gonna recommend The Doll Factory by Elizabeth O'Neill. I love this, so atmospheric, so spooky. And it's about the pre-Raphaelite uh, painters. Someone wants a book centered around a specific color. I'm gonna recommend Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. I feel like I might have already recommended this, but this is one that immediately comes to mind because Bluettes is kind of like, um, a series of like poetry slash essay. It's kind of just a big long essay on the color blue, but it's also about grief, pain, suffering. Someone wants wholesome comedic science fiction. I'm gonna recommend The Illuminate Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, I think their writing is super funny. Illuminate is one of the best young adult sci-fi I've ever read in my life. Um, and there is a lot of wholesomeness in here, but also like it is a very entertaining story. A book with an academic setting and a main and a male character I will pity terribly. Harry Potter. Someone wants a book with sapphic yearning and I almost forgot. I've like forgotten about this book for years and years, but it's time to bring it back. It is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. 
If you can get through that, I promise you, you will get your sapphic yearning. And I have heard, I think, well, I don't think it's out. I think the arc is out that um, another book is being released in the Priory of the Orange Tree world. But this is epic fantasy. There's dragons, there's queens, there's warrior women falling in love with said queens. So Priory. I actually am due for a reread of this because it's been so long. Someone wants depressing, old people, and death. Okay. First one immediately that came to my mind is just Endgame by Samuel Beckett. This is a play about all of those things. There's a huge comment on the treatment of elderly people as well, so I would recommend Endgame. Okay, this one was a big ask. We have someone who wants Dostoevsky existentialism, bloody chamber prose, and George R.R. R. Martin engaging plot mashup. That's a huge ask, but I think I have you covered. Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. Uh, this book has huge philosophical debates about life, death, what is the nature of living, religion, all of that. The prose is gorgeous. All of these were my favorite, just like quotes I highlighted. It's at times very similar to The Bloody Chamber because it does talk a lot about like blood, sensuality, all of that stuff. And the plot is pretty, the plot is definitely not fully up to George R. R. Martin's snuff, but it's not epic fantasy. So this I feel like is the best I can do. Something if you miss your home and your mom, I'm gonna say a little princess. Um, because this is a book about a girl who has to like go through losing her family. She gets put into an orphanage, she loses everything, but this is also like so nostalgic and um, it does have a happy ending, so don't worry. Someone requested a villain gets the girl story. Um, I would like to introduce you to simultaneously one of my favorite and least favorite young adult series. Uh, featuring the biggest crush I have ever had on a fictional character in my life. I'm not proud of it, but um, I now have to out myself because you've asked, and that is Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi. Something that will terrify me but isn't a horror book, I'm gonna recommend Disaster Tourist. Uh, this horrified me beyond belief. It's about tourism and uh, pressing topics. That will give you a good scare. Someone asked for a book that feels like an escape room with lots of puzzles and riddles. I'm gonna recommend The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. There's like mysteries all over the place. There are tons of like weirdly interactive puzzles that you have to almost help our characters solve. It is a middle grade, but there are a ton of little like nuggety puzzle pieces in this book. Okay, a book with fall vibes, music, and magical realism. You essentially just asked for After Dark by Murakami. Like, it has to be After Dark. Like, that's immediately the first thing I think of. Um, someone wants a book that reminds you of your favorite Taylor Swift song. I don't know how I'm supposed to pick just one. Um, I feel like maybe I'll go with the song that like got me into Taylor Swift. Like, I've loved for so long. It's definitely one of my favorites, and that's Dear John. I really love Dear John. And a book that reminds me of that is The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. Uh, love, love this book. And it reminds me so much of that like abusive relationship and I just think there's so many parallels between Dear John and <laughs> The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. A book that makes me feel like I'm Remus Lupin. I want to read every single book like that, but I'm gonna recommend Chess. This one takes a little bit of explaining, but this is about a dude who is very isolated. He gets cut off from all of his friends. He doesn't really know what's happening to them. There's a war going on at the same time. Specifically in chess, it's World War II. It has a lot to do with like how the Nazis tortured uh, people who were like higher up officials. The guy in here just kind of reminded me of Remus's situation because like before, let's say, I guess before Prisoner of Azkaban because like he doesn't know what's happening, he doesn't really know what's good or evil, he kind of just has himself. The guy in here starts to ask himself like, wait, is it possible to be more than one person? Like, it, can I have a second side to myself? And it reminded me a lot of like Lupin's obviously werewolf side because he is himself, but then he's also a werewolf during the full moon uh, week. So yeah, there were a lot of weird parallels between here and the, the agony, the loneliness, um, that just reminded me of Remus Lupin so much. Someone wants a book that takes place in a cave because I'm working as a guide in a cave right now. Where? Can I ask where? That is so cool. Um, the most recent cave book that I just finished was The Legend of the Sleepers 
This is about a group of people who go to sleep in a cave for 300 years. So they're in that cave for 300 years. Someone asked for a Midnight in Paris movie as a book. It's definitely gonna have to be A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. This is about his experience in Paris in the 20s as a writer. Um, a lot of the quotes and sentiments were actually taken from A Movable Feast and put into Midnight in Paris. Of course, Hemingway is a character in Midnight in Paris. If you haven't seen that movie and I read A Movable Feast like right after watching Midnight in Paris, so it just it just works so well. Someone said, I need a new fantasy romance series after Akatar with all the angst. What Akatar is to other people, Fortuna Sworn is to me. This is like the superior Akatar. It's so much better, it's so different as well. Um, but it is my favorite fantasy romance series. There are currently four books out. They each get better and better and better. So even if you don't like the first one, I always say just keep going. But this to me is such a comfort series and I, am obsessed with it uh obsessed with it um someone asked for a book that feels like the relief you feel after vomiting that is a good feeling i mean is it a good feeling it's it's a relieving feeling i'm gonna recommend the sailor who fell from grace with the sea because when i finished this book by mishima i was like thank god like thank god that's over with thank god my eyes are done reading this text this is really um, disturbing. It's about a group of, I think, 13-year-old boys who are extreme idealists and they have this vision of what, like, society should be, how Japan is being taken over by Westerners and, like, what to do about that, and it erupts into insane violence. So, like, by the time you finish reading this book, you're like, oh my god, like, thank, thank god it's over and I don't have to read this horrifying thing anymore, but, like, you still taste it in the back of your mouth. Do you know what I mean? Like, you still feel the bile. Yeah, okay, TMI, this one. <laughs> the next the next request, there was only one book that came to mind about this. Um, someone asked for mountains, religious cults, questionable morals, and murder. And that has to be Never Night by Jay Kristoff. Uh, this one is about a girl named Mia who goes to an assassin school, a school for assassins called the Red Church. It's in these super jagged, hard to access mountains. There's so much murder, so much murder because it's grimdark fantasy. There are really weird religious cults. It's also set in like an ancient Rome inspired world. So tons of religious, atmosphere, everything, and morals. Morals are being questioned every single day, so never night. It almost sounds like you asked for never night. Someone asked for a book where there is only one character in the whole book. I think I'm gonna recommend Pincher Martin by William Golding. I feel like I haven't talked about, about this book on my channel in so long, but there is only really one character in this book, and it's a really interesting, really interesting read when you come to the end of it. Like, I'm not gonna say anything, but I'm just saying at least get to the end of this book, like the last page. Someone asks for a book with a protagonist so unhinged or dysfunctional, I'll go, oh, I'm doing great actually. Um, I think it has to be my year of rest and relaxation. I read that and I was like, you know what? I've got it all together. I've got everything together. Even when I feel like my life is going, falling apart, this book will make me feel better about myself. This one requires some research right now. Someone asked for something with the feeling or mood from book four, part four, chapter nine, page 1180 of War and Peace. Okay, hold on a damn second. Okay, book four, book four, part four, chapter nine. Oh, you know what? I have this page dog-eared. That's really funny. I have this page dog-eared. So what is it? Okay, so this one is a bunch of soldiers partying. They're extremely drunk. Um, they're at war. Okay, so it's like very loud and raucous, but then they all grew silent. The stars, as if knowing that no one was looking at them, began to disport themselves in the dark sky. Now flaring up, now vanishing, now trembling. They were busy whispering something gladsome and mysterious to one another. Okay, okay. So, okay, with the feeling, okay. Hold on a second. Okay, so I'm gonna recommend um, the Oristaya trilogy, or the Oristaya, the Oristaya, Oristaya, by Ischkliss, because these people are not really at war anymore, right? So Agamemnon comes home from war. There is gonna be a ton of partying, or there's gonna be, there's gonna be lots of drinking, lots of feasting, because the war against Troy is over, but this is a book that also deals a lot with fate 
and destinies that are contrived very much like war and peace like that's tolstoy's whole commentary on history um, and why things happen you have moments where like everything just stops and there's like a moment before horrific violence or in tolstoy's case the war resumes um so yeah i recommend this one this one i don't know this one just gave me that starry feeling where like you feel like you're in control of your own life but then above you there are like the dark mysterious stars whispering and you're like do they control me? Someone asked for a book for when the Deutsche Bahn decides to be 60 plus minutes late again. I'm a little angry right now. I was under the impression that German, uh, German Central Railway Line Company, the Deutsche Bahn, would be like always on time. Am I incorrect? Because that's the impression I have of Germany is like your trains are just the most punctual, perfect locomotives in existence. Seeing as that's obviously not the case, you need something to just distract you from the fact that your train is late and just like make that time go by so quickly. So I'm gonna recommend a big, huge sci-fi and that's gonna be Dune by Frank Herbert and I really hope that's okay because I feel like you just need something to like sink into and be like, almost, almost be glad when you're like, oh, the Deutsche Bahn is 30 minutes late. I can now whip out Dune, you know? So hopefully that's good. Someone wants a book with the taste of a Negroni Spariato with Prosecco in it. I actually had to Google what that tastes like because I've never had any of those things. Um, but apparently a Negroni Spariato is like bitter and sweet in equal parts and equal measures. One of the most bittersweet books I can think of is Maurice by Ian Forster. This was published uh, posthumously after his death because it's about a lot about his own experience, his relationships with other men and like his whole world. Like he really put so much into Maurice. So that's when you follow Maurice um, navigating his feelings, navigating feelings he's not allowed to have for other men in this time period. And um, yeah, very bittersweet. I wants a book where the murderer is telling the story. So I'm gonna say Perfume by Patrick Suskind. Someone requested a book that feels like the game Stray. If you're unfamiliar with Stray, it's like cyberpunk, but you're a cat and you're also in the city where um, it's closed off from the rest of the world. It's like a domed city. Someone um, commented that these are actually based on, uh, I don't know where, but cities like this somewhere, like Stray was really inspired by them um, because the outside world has been absolutely decimated by plague and pollution and climate change. And so humans are extinct, but robots, like the helpers we created for us, are now forming their own societies in these enclosed cities. One of the closest books I can think of that like deals with the same topics because the game Stray um, actually talks about a lot of things, but like it, de it deals with so many important topics for humans, even though there aren't any humans in the video game. And it was so impressive, so beautiful. Stray is a big recommendation by itself, but a book like this is Want by Cindy Pon. This is a futuristic, um, it's young adult sci-fi set in futuristic Taipei. In this world, people have to wear suits with like, you know, they look like astronaut suits to keep out all of the pollution and disease that is spreading through their city and the world. And if you take off your suit, you know, you run the risk of dying extremely early, catching awful illnesses and just perishing essentially. But of course the corporations, Gin Corp, that owns these suits sell them for astronomical sums. And so only the rich of the cities can afford them. Um, but in Want, you follow people who are trying to break into Gin Corp and kind of change the world. The descriptions are quite similar from the book Want to the game Stray, like what you're visually seeing, as well as the themes are really, really spot on on dealing with each other, especially like what are these robots learning? Like what is actually going on? What is the world really like? Who is disseminating the truth? Um, and what do the group of young people learn in want about like the societies they live in. This one's really sad. <laughs> I hope you're okay. A book to read when you have a cold that developed into a bacterial infection that spread into pink eye. That's a lot. That's a lot of successive things. I'm gonna recommend not a series of unfortunate events because that's your life right now. I'm gonna recommend Count Carlstein by Philip Pullman because this is just like a really fun, entertaining book to just like lift your spirits. It's a little wacky, a little bit like Monty Python, really funny. Coming to the end here, we have a book about someone with a very weird obsession. Okay, also haven't been able to talk about this book on my channel in a while, so thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm gonna say Iloru by William Gibson. This um, has a number of people with different obsessions. We have one of our main characters who has an obsession and like an ultimate end goal of marrying a very extremely popular, famous, synthetic pop star. 
you know? So think, um, oh my god, what's her name? So think of someone obsessed with idols like that, but who also wants to marry them. You also have people who are obsessed with him because he's also a singer. So you have like the fan club obsessed with the singer and you have the singer obsessed with the um, idol who's not a real human, like they are a computer. Um, yeah, this was really interesting. Someone asked for books that make you seem hot and interesting when reading on public transportation. Um, what is, what is a book that if I saw someone reading, I'd be like, smash. <laughs> Maybe the Norton Anthology of Theory and Criticism, but it really depends which essay you're reading. Um, but also that book is like this long, so something a little shorter. If I saw you reading, I'd be like, that person is the coolest person. Um, it's my favorite book, so super egotistical. Um, 100 Years of Solitude, but I also feel like this book will take you so much out of the fact that you are on public transportation and that you're like concerned about appearing interesting um, and just make you forget everything. None of that matters anymore. It's just this book that matters. It's just this book that matters. And like if I ever see someone reading this in public, I like need to go up to them. I need to speak to them. I need to have a conversation with them so that more than anything, this book. Last two here, someone wants a safe buy to give someone you don't know that well. I feel like like vanilla thrillers are really good because like who wouldn't read a vanilla thriller, you know? In this case, I'm gonna say The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. Um, I thought this was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I'm not a big thriller person, but again, if someone gifted me this, even though I'm not a big thriller person, I would read it because I did read it and I liked it and it's very popular. I be is there an adaptation in the works? Um, I just feel like this is a pretty safe bet. Okay, and finally the last one. Someone wants fiction books. This is like a three-in-one, a three-for-one deal. Fiction books featuring entomology, which is the study of insects, ornithology, which is the study of birds, and geology, which is the study of geology, <laughs> the earth. For entomology, the only book I've read I can think of that dealt with that is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. This features someone who was an imperial entomologist, so he studied insects for the government. Very interesting. For ornithology, I'm going to recommend The Essex Serpent by Sarah Hall. Um, this features a protagonist who is a naturalist. It's also set in the Victorian period, I believe. She's a naturalist, so it's not just that she studies birds, she studies everything, but this book is rife with natural imagery, um, birds slash snake creatures, weird stuff like that. And then for geology, I have to recommend The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin or the whole Broken Earth trilogy because that is the best book that I've ever read featuring geology. Extremely impressive. Um, I think you would love it. Oh my god! Those are finally all of the recommendations I've been filming for so long. If yours was not answered, I plan to do many more of these, so don't worry, but I hope you got um, a recommendation that was good. Also, if you have your own answers for literally any of these, please pop them in the comments so that the people who asked can have like many more, <laughs> many more. So if you think you have a good recommendation for any of those requests, please just type it out um, so that the people can, you know, you know, find it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Wonder for sponsoring today's video. Link is in the description. And until my next one, that is when I will see you probably talking about some more books. So, ciao.